I'm going to be working through question two of the 2019 NSC chemistry paper. That is paper two and question two relates to organic chemistry, the naming and drawing of organic molecules. In this paper, it's important to see that question 1.3, one of the multiple choice questions, also refers to this first section of organic chemistry. The question reads, which one of the following combinations are both unsaturated hydrocarbons? The key here is that the word hydrocarbons reminds us that these compounds must only contain hydrogen and carbon, which immediately rules out option C with ethanol because that contains oxygen and ethanoic acid, which also contains oxygen. And unsaturated, we know, refers to molecules that contain multiple bonds, a double or a triple bond. And so the correct answer here is option B, because ethene contains a double bond and ethine contains a triple bond. So the correct answer to question 1.3 is option B. Then on to question 2. Question 2.1 reads as follows. The IUPAC name of an organic compound is 4,4-dimethylpent2-ion, 2.1.1. Write down the general formula of the homologous series to which this compound belongs. And we know that the functional group identified by the suffix Y-N-E is a triple bond. And we know that all molecules that contain a triple bond are the alkynes. And the general formula for an alkyne is 2C2NH2N-2, where all alkynes that contain one triple bond will have the general formula C2NH2N-2. Question 2.1.2 asks, write down the structural formula of this compound. It's advised that you give enough space and that you make the structural formula big enough so that it is easy to see and easy to mark. In this compound, we would start by seeing that the main carbon chain contains five carbons, that is pent, meth, eth, prop, but, pent. We can then see that there is a triple bond that is on the second carbon. I'm going to count from the left here and indicate the triple bond on that second carbon. And then, since I have allocated this as carbon number one, I can now say that this must be carbon number four, and there is a methyl group on the fourth carbon. There are, in fact, two methyl groups on the fourth carbon, therefore dimethyl. And the last step is to ensure that I have made every carbon with four bonds. So the remaining bonds must be filled by hydrogens, and we make sure that each carbon has formed four bonds to ensure that we draw the structural formula correctly. It is advised that you draw the structural formula big enough so that these hydrogens do not overlap with each other. It also makes it easier for the marker. And that is the structural formula for 4,4-dimethylpent2-ion. Question 2.2. The organic compound below has one positional isomer and one functional isomer. And here we have the structural formula for this organic compound. Question 2.2.1 asks, define the term positional isomer. Where a positional isomer is defined as compounds with the same molecular formula, but different positions of the side chain or substituent or functional groups on the parent chain. Once again, the marking guidelines allocate specific words with marks. So in this case, the first mark was allocated for same molecular formula having those words. And the second mark was for different positions of either the side chain substituents or functional groups, which is why it's so important to have these definitions almost word for word because the marks are allocated to specific words and word orders. Question 2.2.2 says, for this compound, write down the IUPAC name of its positional isomer. And we know that a positional isomer means that the functional group has changed its position. 
And because we can see that this is a ketone, contains a carbonyl group that is not on the first carbon, the only possible position for this carbonyl group to exist, other than on position 2, is position 3. Because if it moved on to position 1, it would no longer be a ketone. If it moved to this carbon over here, that would be carbon number 2 from the right-hand side. So the IUPAC name for this positional isomer, the structural formula would look roughly like this, with our carbonyl group on the third carbon, which means that this would then have the name five carbons, meaning pent. It's a ketone, so it gets the suffix anone, and so we say pentan 3 ohm The marking guidelines do also accept 3-pentanone, or pent-3-anone, but this is the most correct way to, to name it, pentan 3 ohm 2.2.3 asks, give the structural formula of its functional isomer. We know that the only possible functional isomer for a ketone is an aldehyde, and the only other functional isomers that we know of are esters and carboxylic acids. So here we have an uh, ketone, and so the functional isomer would be an aldehyde, and as a result, we show that the aldehyde has, once again, drawing the structural formula big enough so that it is easy to see five carbons on the main chain where the carbonyl group is now on the first carbon and is therefore called a formyl group. And the last thing to do is to ensure that every carbon has formed four bonds by adding all the hydrogens that are necessary. And so here we have the structural formula for a functional isomer of this ketone over here, which is an aldehyde. Question 2.3. Consider the condensed structural formula of an organic compound below, and I find that it is always easier to rewrite condensed structural formula just so that it is easier to see and make sense of. And here we see that there's a carbon that has a hydroxyl group on it, and we also see that this CH3 is in brackets, which means that it is seen as a branch to the main chain, a methyl branch here, and then followed by another CH3. Question 2.3.1. Is this a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol? Give a reason for your answer. And here we can see that the carbon to which the hydroxyl group is attached is attached to three other carbons. The fact that there are three other carbons tells us that this is a tertiary alcohol, and we give exactly that reason. It is a tertiary alcohol because the carbon attached to the hydroxyl group is attached to three other carbons. Question 2.3.2 asks, write down the IUPAC name of the above compound. And we can do that firstly by naming the main chain. We see the main chain has one, two, three, four carbons, that being meth, eth, prop, but. We can then see that it is an alcohol and therefore gets the suffix anol, but we must indicate the position of that hydroxyl group, so we call it butan 2 ol And finally, we identify that there is a single branch also on the second carbon, so this would be 2-methyl butan 2 ol Very important to write this as one word and leave no doubt that it is one word. Do not leave any spaces so that it can be misunderstood, 2-methyl-butan-2-ol. And finally, question 2.3.3 asks, write down the IUPAC name of the major organic product formed when this compound undergoes an elimination reaction. And we know that an elimination reaction is one in which a smaller molecule is removed and we are left with an unsaturated compound, so we are going to be left with an alkene here. And the only thing that can be eliminated here is going to be this main functional group, the hydroxyl group. And then in order for it to be an elimination where we remove a water molecule, it is then necessary to remove a hydrogen as well. Now, as we can see, 
If we remove the hydroxyl group from the second carbon, we have two options. The first being to remove the hydrogen from the first carbon. The second being to remove the hydrogen from the third carbon. And we would here use Zaitsev's rule, which tells us that we will remove the hydrogen from the carbon that has fewer hydrogens already. And so this carbon only has two hydrogens, where this carbon has three. And so our main compound that we form is going to look like this in structural formula. And then once we have shown this, we can then very easily name this as meth eth -but. There is a double bond on the second carbon, so this is going to be but to ene and there is still a methyl branch on the second carbon. So we would say that this is then 2-methyl but 2 in. Once again, we've been told it's an elimination reaction. We are going to eliminate the hydroxyl group and we are going to remove a hydrogen as well. And we use Zaitsev's rule to determine that the hydrogen would be removed from the third carbon. And as a result, we form a double bond between those two carbons that have lost an atom. And we form 2-methyl but 2 in. Very important to note on the marking guidelines that your structural formula must include every single additional hydrogen. You cannot leave a hydrogen out in some place, otherwise you would be penalized for that. When it comes to your definition, the word order and specific words are important, so we encourage you to learn these definitions almost as they are given in the syllabus.